Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we are ready to get started with uh, today's uh, presentation. Uh, the title of today's presentation is Simulating Contaminant Containment Booms in Oil Spill Simulations Using Oil Flow 2D. Um, my name is Reinaldo Garcia. I'm the Director of Development and Applications at Hadronia. And I'm going to be presenting today's uh, uh, webinar. So um, we are uh, been adding more capabilities to the oil flow 2D model. And, and today's presentation is about uh, a new um, tool that uh, we think is very useful for containment, uh, contingency planning and uh, oil spill uh, emergency planning as well. So first uh, we are going to be um, talking uh, very briefly but uh, the, the presenting what uh, are the containment booms. Uh, then we're going to um, show what is the oil flow 2D model for those of you who are not familiar with uh, our uh, oil spill simulation model. Uh, then uh, I'm going to be uh, presenting the boom simulation tools and uh, finally we have uh, a, a question and answer period for those of you who would like to make any question. Um, first I wanted to um, thank our, our uh, clients and, and users that uh, are uh, using our different uh, models and mainly or oil flow to the model and they are uh, the ones who help us maintain our continuous uh, development process that uh, we do uh, in-house and also with the cooperation we have with the university different universities but mainly the University of Zaragoza in Spain now today's uh, today's development is uh, an in-house development, and the support of our users uh, is greatly appreciated. So, what are containment booms? Now, when uh, a oil spill occurs on the water, either on a river or a bay or a coastal environment, the oil starts to spread or starts to move according to the water velocities. And one of very common way to contain the spreading of the oil is to use a containment booms. There are many types of uh, booms and we are going to be focusing on on one of them that is the uh, the hard boom uh, and that's what um, I'm showing in in the screen now so the containment booms is uh, this is one uh, courtesy of uh, Texas boom companies a company that um, develops this, this type of booms. Uh, we don't have any relationship or sponsorship to this company, but uh, we have uh, um, taken advantage of the information that they have that is very comprehensive about booms. And they have many types of booms and, and this, this one in particular. So the boom is a cylindrical, it's, a, it's like a sausage type of thing. It's, it's like a device that is formed by a cylinder, a floating device, is, is normally rubber, made of rubber or plastic, and it has a, a tension cable on the top that is tied to either a boat or a ship or, or to a, a, a different um, um, point on, on land. It, it can have uh, many different ways to deploy it. And in this particular uh, example, we have it uh, one that is tied to a fixed location. 
And then this tension cable helps to maintain the integrity of the of the boom on the water. And uh, the this cylinder uh, contains normally a, a floating material. So this is the the material that uh, is responsible for keeping the uh, the boom floating and not going to the bottom. Then there is the skirt. The skirt is this area here. It's called the skirt, and this this is the one, the area, the the uh, uh, part of the boom that maintain the oil behind the boom itself. So you can see here an example of a similar boom. And then there is on the lower part. Uh, it's a, a ballast chain, so it's a weight that helps to keep the skirt as much as possible in the vertical direction. So we don't want to get this skirt uh, moving uh, up and down with the currents. We would like to keep it as vertical as possible to avoid the failure of the, the boom, as we will see. So total height is this distance from the top uh, tension cable to the ballast chain on the, on the bottom. And uh, this is what is called the freeboard from this point to the top. And then we have the draft that is the one that is normally underwater. So the hard boom, such so this one here that is shown, um, is then a floating device that has the floating part on the top and the, the skirt on the bottom that is submerged. There are different types of booms, as I mentioned. Um, the, the, these booms can be used as the deflection devices, as we will see. They can redirect the oil when the currents and winds are not too strong. And there are other types of booms that they call the servant boom. The servant, uh, as is, its name implies, uh, is a material that helps to absorb the uh, oil into it. So it's a material that is capable of retaining part of the oil on, on the boom itself. It's not only containment, uh, but also absorbing to remove oil from the water surface. Now, the the tool I'll, I'll be talking about that has been implemented in the uh, oil flow to the model is mainly capable of simulating this type of booms that uh, we show here. Now, in in practical applications, uh, we can use uh, booms to contain or or uh, redirect the spreading of the oil on the water surface. So um, the, the first thing we would like to do with the booms is to avoid the spreading of the oil. So either by containing it into the area that is covered by the boom or by redirecting it to other areas. So the idea is to accumulate as much as oil as possible on, on the area covered by the boom. And uh, you, you can see here different options. Uh, so you have here in the river, you can have booms that um, redirect the oil or contain the total oil, but it tends to redirect it to the um, areas that can be collected. Uh, there's another way to put the booms. There are many different ways to um, put this in, in actual applications. And what you see here on the top uh, is schematically seen here on, on this uh, image over here. So you have two talks or, or two uh, talk boats that are um, moving the boom in certain directions. So this is one talk boat, this is another one here. So you see here the tension cable that is being um, 
driven by the, the votes in this direction. And then the uh, assuming that the oil is in, in the central part here, um, this oil will be collected by this other boat here. And the collection is on, on this area over here. And then the oil is taken out of the water by a skimmer typically. So you use a skimmer, which is another device that is very common in, in applications where um, the oil is removed from the water and then taken into tanks that are uh, uh, in, in the boats here. Now, the, the issue is that the booms are not 100% effective. There are many things that can affect the, um, how, how the booms behave or how effective they are to contain the oil. And we will see that in a couple of minutes. Uh, but that is very important because we, in any simulation tool that we use, we, we should be able to control or simulate how, how effective is the oil to contain or accumulate the oil that uh, we are trying to simulate. Um, so this is a, a general uh, view of how the, um, the booms, this type of uh, booms, hard booms are applied. Um, now the oil flow to the model is a general uh, simulation model that uh, can simulate spills uh, both uh, over land and also on water. So it's a two-dimensional uh, viscous fluid hydrodynamic model uh, that uses flexible mesh. It can uh, do point sources or area sources. It can do rainfall evaporation, hydraulic structures, and wind. So the, the general, the basic model includes not only oil, but also water that is essential for the oil spills on water as well. And then it has these two modules, which is the overland flow model that has includes behavior change of the oil based on the evaporation, infiltration, rainfall, hydraulic structures. It can uh, consider the heat transfer with the environment and how the heat transfer affect the temperature variation of the oil and consequently the the way that this temperature variation affects the oil properties such as density and viscosity we have recently added the oil pipeline module which uh, is is a very comprehensive module that allows simulation of uh, hundreds of spills in risk assessments for integrity uh, evaluation of pipelines and it will evaluate in batch mode hundreds of spills uh, along the pipeline. Now the oil and water which is the the one that has the, the boom uh, tool uh, is an oil trajectory uh, model that uses particle tracking it can also account for evaporation, emulsification, dissolution, and shore interaction of the oil with the shores. And um, the containment booms is the tool that adds to this module here. Um, we are presently also adding, a, and actually in the next uh, uh, version, uh, we are adding the option to simulate the spills from moving ships. So. Uh, up to now, we were only able to simulate uh, spills from a fixed in space uh, spill, but uh, now we, we are going to be able also to simulate moving ships. And this will be the topic of a forthcoming webinar as well. Now, this is an example of a, an application of a spill, uh, the overland spill. Uh, what you see here in colors is the depth of the oil or thickness of the oil. And these are two simulations, one with heat transfer, uh, the, both with heat transfer, but this with wind speed of two meters per second and this with uh, 20 meters per second. As you can see the difference that makes heat transfer in some oils because the heat transfer uh, affects the oil 
temperature, how the oil temperature affect, uh, and then the oil, in, in, in turn, the oil temperature affects the viscosity. And when the certain oils, especially those that contain, has a high wax content, uh, can exhibit a very uh, a different viscosity or increasing viscosity when they cool down from the storage temperature. It can also happen to asphalt. Some um, some uh, oils that uh, are are very sensitive to temperature. Uh, this is another example that I will uh, explain also later. We will use that in the example of the booms. This is an oil spill uh, in the Magdalena River in Colombia that we use for illustration of the model behavior. Uh, this is the trajectory of the oil particle tracking. And um, so this is, of course, is a application without any booms. But you can see here the trajectory and also how the the oil uh, sticks to some of the shores of this particular river. Now, for the overland flow, we use flexible mesh, finite volume numerical solution. So the 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 mesh is formed by triangles. Each triangle is the um, the main computational unit and on which we calculate the oil depth, velocity, oil property changes, and so forth. In the oil trajectory algorithm for uh, the, the oil and water, we assume that the oil is formed by a large number of particles. And these particles are oil particles, each of which have uh, its own property, volume, spreading, um, viscosity, density, uh, state, and the particles can be on the three-dimensional uh, uh, water body. So the, the particles can sink to the bottom if the density increases sufficiently and, uh, and also can stick to the, the shores if that happens. But this is the, the main um, assumption in the oil trajectory algorithm for the oil and water model. Now, uh, when we do not have any booms, uh, we calculate the oil particle of, of the trajectory for each particle from one location to the next. So what we normally do, we have the mesh where we compute the oil, the, the water velocities, and then when the oil is spreading, each particle will move according to the, uh, the, the water velocities and also the spreading uh, coefficients. And the oil particle, for instance, at uh, uh, time t is uh, in one cell and at time t plus delta t is uh, another cell. So it's moving. And this uh, uh, translation is determined in part by the water velocity. So if there is no boom, there is no restriction to the movement of the particle, uh, provided that it uh, remains within the mesh. Now, when there is a boom, the boom, as we will see, is will be uh, defined by a polyline that can have any any uh, location and any form, and then uh, the the particle at time t will be here, but then it will be intercepted by the boom and then it will not be allowed to move anymore unless there is a, a, a percentage of efficiency defined to assign to to that particular boom now a, a typical oil spill application on water uh, it includes First, the setup of the hydrodynamic model, because we need to know the water velocities in order to determine the trajectory of the oil. So we first set up the hydrodynamic model. We first run the hydrodynamic model and obtain the water velocities. And then once we have that, then we set up the oil spill model, enter the oil spill properties and parameters for behavior simulation and run the oil spill on water model. So these are the typical steps for oil spills on water. Um, as uh, you know, uh, we use the QGIS to, um, it's, a, it's a graphical user interface. 
through a, a plugin that uh, we have developed in-house. Uh, and, and this plugin is uh, represented by this number of uh, icons, each of which uh, includes different uh, uh, tools to either enter the data and also to process maps and animations as well. Uh, so the first step is to uh, add the layers that uh, we were going to be using. As you can see here, we have a layer that is called the spill booms. That is the one that we are adding now. Um, but uh, initially what we do is to, we add the bathymetry. In this case is a section of the Magdalena River. What you see here, this is the city of Barranquilla in Colombia. And uh, once we have the digital elevation model, that is normally a raster, uh, then we enter a polygon that represents the boundary of the simulation area that we want to cover. It's this uh, polygon uh, represented by this black line here. Uh, then we add, uh, a, we generate the mesh, and this mesh is formed by triangles. And this is the mesh in which we will be computing the velocity field. So once we compute the velocity field, we are ready to enter the environmental parameters and the oil properties for the oil and water. And this is done in the data input program, uh, oil spill on water panel, where we have a number of tabs here to enter data for uh, general control data for the run, simulation time, output interval, um, calculation time step, and some other factors, trajectory, evaporation, emulsification, shoreline, and some other parameters that we enter here. Um, this is an example of a velocity field and a, a simulation of, uh, of the trajectory of the oil. So what you see here are the velocity vectors uh, computed by the model that uh, these are water velocity vectors. Now the spill booms are entered uh, by defining polylines in the spill booms layer. That is the new layer in QGIS uh, plugin that we have added. And these uh, uh, polylines will have, initially we are adding only three attributes. Uh, the ID, so it's a name that we assign for each boom, it's this one here. The oil trapping fraction, which is this one here. This oil trapping fraction defines the effectiveness of the boom to contain oil. And it can vary from zero to one. One meaning it has 100% efficiency to trap oil and zero is, of course, has no efficiency at all. So it will not exist uh, practically. And it can have any, any value in between. Um, and then we have added also a way to move the oil, uh, um, by, uh, move the boom um, by adding the velocity of uh, the, the boom itself. So this would simulate a moving boom that is uh, uh, being moved by, by tug, uh, tugboats. So we can add that information as well here. Now, um, it is very important to have a, a flexibility to, to determine the, the location of the boom and the alignment of the boom. And that's why we have uh, selected the, the option to add polylines. The polylines can be um, entered by the user and they can have any configuration. As you can see here, you can have U, uh, this, is, uh, this is from the Fingers Oil, uh, Oil Spill Science and Technology book by Mer Fingers. Uh, Mer Fingers uh, is a, a researcher from Environment Canada. He uh, worked for many years at Environment Canada and has, now is a private consultant. 
and he developed a number of uh, publications uh, for not only containment uh, but also for oil behavior as well, evaporation and emulsification uh, methods. Uh, but you can see here typical configurations. You have this U configuration where you have two tugboats um, driving driving the the the, uh, uh, the boom. Here we have another V configuration. We have uh, encirclement uh, uh, around a tanker. You can have configurations of tugboats in in asymmetric uh, pattern and uh, also in bays or in <clears throat> in rivers it is common in in rivers where we can uh put uh booms in in different uh, uh in cascading form as you can see here now all of this can be included in the model so you can have multiple booms and each boom can have its own uh, alignment and each boom can have it, its own efficiency assigned to it. So the trapping efficiency can be assigned to each boom individually. Now, why it's important to have the trapping uh, efficiency added to the boom? Because unfortunately, the booms are not perfect and, and they tend to fail. And when we talk about boom failure or performance failure, we are talking about booms that are not able to contain completely the oil that uh, they are, um, uh, it's arriving to it. And uh, so uh, we, we need to consider that because there are many situations where the, the boom can fail. And you can see here some of these situations. You have the entrainment where the water current is, is very high, and then you have uh, a, flow of um, oil from the slick and then going under the skirt and moving on the other side. You can have here also, this is drainage failure. Uh, when the water current is high enough, you may have overflow of the boom on the top. Uh, sometimes they have so much oil that part of the oil, the boom is not able to contain oil anymore and then it's coming under it again. Um, you have uh, sometimes a splash over the submergence with the oil. It's is forced, uh, the boom is under water and then the oil is going over it as well. Or also where the skirt is not vertical and then the skirt is moved because the tension on the, the blast uh, chain on the bottom is not high enough. And then the the skirt will be almost horizontal, and the oil will will uh, overwhelm also the the uh, the uh, the boom. Now it is accepted that typically for uh, velocities higher than uh, half a meter per second, the the performance of the boom will be compromised. Uh, that doesn't mean that they will not work, but it will. It means that oil will start to pass up under the skirt. Um, so this is uh, some design situation that you would need to keep into consideration. Um, this is an example of a uh, taken for this uh, from from this uh, publication um, where they measure the total volume contained by the oil the collected and the loss, of course, uh, as a function of tow speed. So the higher the speed of the towing of the boom, the lower the oil collected. So there will be, of course, more oil going under the, uh, um, uh, the boom itself. Now you can use uh, graphs similar to these, depending on the the boom that you are uh, simulating, uh, but this, because this will tell you the percentage of oil that uh, will be lost for each particular tow speed. So you can use graphs similar to these to determine the parameter that we use in the model to 
um, as, a, as an oil trapping capacity. Uh, or what we call also the oil trapping fraction. So this is in the uh, data, data input program and the booms um, tab that we have here in this case, we have two booms, one with uh, 0.5 trapping capacity, uh, another one with one, so it's total perfectly capable of handling all the capacity and this is the talk um, velocity that is zero in this case, but you can change that in the model as well. So let me uh, go over a, a quick demonstration of uh, how the, the model works. And um, let me, I have a, a, a case that I have prepared for you here. Uh, so we have already uh, run the simulation of a, uh, a water flow within the Magdalena River uh, near Barranquilla. And we have had it here, as you can see, there is an oil spill location over here. And then um, we can use the, the new tool to add booms in this area. So what I'm going to do is to add a new template layer that is the spill boom. And then I will add, let me turn this off here. Uh, so I will add two booms. So this is the uh, polyline spill boom layer. So I click here to add the boom and add a feature polyline. Now the boom can be on land or on water. It, it's up to you. Uh, let me add a, a boom here that is like this. Oops, sorry. So this covers Um, so, uh, or the old trapping fraction, let's put uh, one here, a complete fraction. So this means that it will trap 100% of the oil that gets to it. And that's why I, I cover the complete river. And I will add here another boom that is not covering everything. And I will have I will leave this at 50% capacity. So 50% of the oil will be trapped only here. Okay, so we have here, the oil will be coming from here. 50% uh, should be trapped here and the other 100% will be trapped over, over there. So let's uh, export the oil and water file. Uh, I will use the compute booms here, simulation time, two hours, output interval, 0.1 time step. We'll leave all this data in the same way. So uh, now when the export is ready, uh, the deep will come up, the deep window with uh, all the data that uh, we can check here, the data for the booms as we entered it. Um, I will change the default values for the dispersion because this dispersion is uh, somewhat uh, high for a river like this. So I will put a lower dispersion rate, 0 0.1 meter square per second and zero in the vertical. I will save the file. And I will run the model. So the model will start running. Uh, let me bring, I have two monitors and it's coming in the other window. So let me try to bring it to this window here. So the, the model will show 
the evolution of or the trajectory of the spill. This is now the model is actually running here. This is not a video. This is the model running. So you can see here the oil particles uh, getting to the first boom, which is here. You can see that the particles of oil accumulate on the boom, but there are parts of the oil that is going under because it's only 50% capable of retaining the, the oil here. And then it's approaching the second boom. Well, we call it uh, boom one, but it's the one that is for the downstream. And as you can see here, this boom is able to contain all of the oil that is getting to it. There are still oil coming up along this line. So the total simulation time is one hour, uh, is two hours, so we'll still have half an hour to um, to simulate. See here, 142. And there is no oil coming down. Now, if we, if I would have used a a a higher, uh, I mean, a lower percentage of uh, capacity, of course, there will be oil coming down. Now we can uh, animate that uh, over here, so we can select the animation tool, which is this icon here. We can select layer that. Uh, represents, for instance, the the oil on uh, water volume. We select, we have only one spill. So we can now, let me move down the, the, the raster that represents the terrain and then we can uh, proceed with the animation. So this is now not the model running, this is the actual, uh, this is an, an animation that we can export as well. So uh, as you can see, there is a trapping capacity. Now we have, we have a number of uh, options to represent the numeric, uh, but the, the the mass balance uh, if in here uh, you can see that there is a a new file that is called outbooms and this this file contains a table that tells you the retention volume for each boom in barrels and cubic meter meters and and you can see here for each time according to the output interval, how much volume was retained by the boom number one, which is the one downstream, and boom number two, which is the one upstream. And uh, so uh, this is, uh, it's very useful because it will tell you uh, exactly how much oil can be retained according to the dynamics of the flow and so forth. There is a, uh, I mean, it's very easy once you have the, the model set up in this way, you can come back and, and say, well, uh, let me analyze another, um, either another boom or another uh, alignment that uh, we would like to analyze or, or uh, analyze a moving boom. Uh, if you want to analyze a moving boom, then we can do uh, at a velocity, let's say that the boom number one, you want to have a velocity, let's say we want to move it uh, upstream, uh, to move it upstream, let me put a 0 0.1 meter per second, positive 0 0.1 and negative in the velocity. So this is the velocity vector, uh, minus 0 0.1, uh, meters per second. So this will be equivalent to a velocity vector. So the the boom will be traveling upstream in this direction, in, in 
essentially with 0 0.1 in this direction and minus 0 0.1 in this direction. So let's uh, keep the upstream boom, the boom number two, the same. So I'm only changing the boom downstream. Uh, now what we do is export export the the uh, data that I have just uh, changed. Uh, I since I didn't uh, save this, I need to save the dispersion coefficient that I had added. I'm I'm just putting the same as before just to be consistent. Uh, but you can see here in the booms that now we have a a talk velocity that is different. Let me let me change as well this one here. We can change the values here, by the way. So let me have uh, a a different uh, trapping uh, fraction. So let me save this. Okay, so let's do the run. And again, the run starts in the other folder and the other monitor. So let me move it here. Now, uh, you should see as the oil comes down that the this boom is moving upstream you see how it's moving upstream still there is no oil getting to this one here so it is assumed that the talks are are moving the boom upstream this one is fixed because we didn't add any velocity now there are some parts of the oil that is coming down because we added a only 50% capacity. So 50% of the oil that reaches the boom is, is moving downstream. So uh, you, can, you can play you know, a number of scenarios. So this is very useful for contingency planning because you can, you can plan how do you you want to contain the oil, what would be the best way, what the optimize the operations that uh, you want to exercise uh, in order to contain as much oil as possible. So maybe you have, you can analyze different booms that uh, maybe one will contain 50%, the other one will contain 50%, and, and then you need to add uh, two more to contain 100% of, of the oil. Um, now, by the way, we have also a new tool that I wanted to show you that is a, a, uh, a tool by which you can add a, um, a create an animation. So this, this animation tool um, uh, is, it will contain, a, um, it, it will animate a, a self-contained file that, um, So this is the, so it creates very quickly uh, uh, a, an MP4, which is a file format for a, an animation. So here is the thing that we added. You see that the, how the boom is moving upstream. Then you can add this to the, your presentation. I have here a previous uh, file that I created in a in a in the preparation of. You can see here. Um, this this wasn't created by by that particular tool. It's, it's created directly within the QGIS environment. And then we have here the um, the, the balance, the uh, um, the mass balance uh, um, output file 
that I was explaining to you that uh, it contains all the balancing barrels and cubic meter per second for each time interval. So that that's the uh, about the um, the boom stool. So um, this will be released in the in the next um, in the next week or so. Uh, so probably by the end of next week, uh, those users who have uh, have uh, current uh, subscription uh, with the maintenance, they they will have access directly at no cost uh, for this tool, and also for the new one that is the the moving the moving uh, uh, boat one. So, uh, but that that will be ready in about a week or so, released. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question, um, I'll, I'll be happy to to answer that. So you can use the question panel. Okay. Uh, okay, I have a question here, but Bruno is asking um, if uh, if the booms can be the boom type can be selected well for in this pressure in this initial version no uh, the only way to represent different types of booms is by selecting the the trapping capacity so we are not adding the type of booms uh, at this point because there are a lot of uncertainty on the the trapping capacity that we found uh, in the literature uh, for for different type of booms. So we are letting the user just select here, select the oil trapping fraction. So how much oil do you expect that boom to to uh, to uh, trap oil? So if, let's say if you if you have a, a uh, you know, uh, a hard boom with skirt of one meter, uh, you need to estimate how much volume you expect that boom to contain. So if you expect to contain 50%, you add here 0 0.5, you expect to contain uh, only 30%, then you add here the, the 0 0.3 or, and so forth. So we are not uh, in this version, at least until we are confident uh, with the way to assess the oil, the the efficiency of each type of boom. Um, we are deferring that until that time. So for now, uh, you will need to add the oil trapping fraction for each uh, whatever type of uh, boom that you select. Um, okay, so you have a number of uh, of publications. Uh, I have another question. Where to obtain the values of efficiency of of the booms? Um, in the in the book that I mentioned uh, by Mer Fingers, he describes several uh, types of booms and the the velocity that uh, uh, that is the limiting factor uh, and and you can use that particular um, that particular um, publication to obtain a, at least a, a, a crude estimate of that um, however I in in the uh, in the way I think this will be more useful to as an application uh, is to consider not to be overly relying on on numbers of specific uh, cases. That is what we have found in the literature. So I think the best way to apply this would be to assume something that would be reasonable, maybe on the range of maybe 30 to 50 percent at most and and use that as a general 
um, guideline to uh, plan, plan the, the way the spills uh, are simulated with the booms. Because, you know, adding, I don't think that uh, the, the literature is mature enough to determine the specific values that you can rely on, you know, and, and say, okay, this type of boom will contain 70%. It depends on so many factors that uh, I think it's better to be more conservative and, and assume that the oil will be trapped in a lower percentage, maybe on that range of 30 to 50% at most. Uh, unless your conditions are very, uh, you know, correspond to, to very low velocities in a river that uh, are, are not exceeding, uh, you know, 50 centimeter per second or so, because otherwise it will be very much uh, uh, risky to use a, a higher containment percentage. Um, uh, Bruno is asking if, if the boom uh, manufacturers uh, could be able to provide the trapping capacity. Yes, the, yeah, definitely. The, the, uh, they should be able to provide, uh, if, you, if you ask them about the specific boom types and, um, and the conditions on which they will be operated uh, or deployed, they should be able to provide at least an estimate of of the trapping capacity of of the of the uh, of these booms of their booms at least. Um, okay, uh, Julio is asking about uh, the coefficients dispersion coefficients. Uh, where to obtain? Well, there is a reference. Um, uh, uh, river mixing is called river mixing that uh, indicates the um, dispersion coefficients for rivers. However, uh, uh, I have a, a, a publications that I did many years ago that um, re, um, refers specifically to dispersion coefficients on um i let me see related to oil spills um let me s I, I i can send that to you if you are interested i will send it to you uh julio about um it's a reference that see if i have it here uh No, I, I don't have it here. Um, I will send it to you. It's a it's a paper I published probably in 1995 or so, uh, where I developed some formulations of dispersion coefficients based on the oil spreading formulations. So that can be used to determine the spreading coefficients. Um, how many cells? Can a mesh, how many cells can we mesh to get a fast result? Well, the, uh, this this model, the, the mesh, um, I mean, this model is a GPU-based model, is is paralyzed. So if you have a, a good um, GPU card, the model can run very fast, even with with high resolution meshes. So that that's not an issue. I mean, the, the model can perform very quickly. Um, yeah, okay, Chris is also asking for the paper. I will send the paper to all to all of the um, those who to attend the webinar. so um, so expect that from from me in the next uh, day or so. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, I, I think that's it uh, for today. Uh, I, I just remained, uh, remains me to thank you very much for attending the webinar and um, for your interest in our models. And 
you will receive also a notification about the recording because the webinar has been recorded and you're free to share it with your colleagues if you are uh, if they are interested as well well thank you very much and i'll see you in a future webinar bye